Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to see how to create Microsoft Fabric resource and enable it in the workspace. In the last video, we have seen the complete introduction about Microsoft Fabric. So if you haven't watched the video yet, please do watch to get some idea about Microsoft Fabric. Okay, so let's get started now. So right now I'm inside the Power BI workspace or it is otherwise called as Power BI service. So if you type app.powerbi.com in the URL, you'll land to the Power BI service account where you can also access the workspace if you have the required access. So we'll be enabling Microsoft Fabric to the Power BI workspace, which means that we'll be using the Fabric components in the same Power BI UI. So currently I'm accessing this Power BI workspace using an account called Kumar SR. This account is a free account and it does not have any kinds of Power BI licensing such as Pro license or Premium license, etc. It's just a free account which I use to log into this Power BI service. So the name of the workspace which I'm currently using is called My Workspace. This is a default one that gets created for each user. So in this demo, we'll be enabling Fabric to this workspace. So if you click on the three dots here and click on the workspace settings, as you can see here, there are different kinds of licensing such as Pro, Premium, etc. In that, we are more interested in the Fabric Capacity and Premium Capacity license. Also, we have a trial license where we could make use of it. So we can enable Fabric in two bases. The first one is, similar to how we create a normal resource using Azure portal, we can also create Microsoft Fabric. And then we can use the compute inside the Power BI workspace using the Fabric Capacity license. And the other way is to buy a license in the Microsoft 365 itself. This is completely different from the Azure subscription and the licensing is just handled in the Microsoft 365 end. So if you get a premium license for the Power BI workspace, then we'll be able to use the Fabric content along with it. As you can see here in the premium option, the Fabric content is also supported along with this licensing. Also, we have the trial options available for all the users where they could try using the Fabric content for 60 days as a free option. So when you enable this trial option, you get to use the premium workspace and thereby getting the Fabric content along with it. In this video, we are going to explore the Fabric capacity. Let's go to the Azure portal and create Microsoft Fabric. And after that, let's see how we can enable the compute in the Power BI workspace. Now I'll close this window and I'll go to the other tab. As you can see here, I'm in the Azure portal right now. I have signed into the Azure portal using the same Kumar SR account that we used to sign in the Power BI workspace. Also, as you can see here, I'm inside the resource group called RG Mr. K Azure Tutorials. This is the resource group that I'm using for all my tutorials. So let's use the same resource group for creating Microsoft Fabric as well. Firstly, let's click on this create button and it will take us to the Azure Marketplace. In the search box, I will type for Microsoft Fabric. And let's click on the first option here. So this is the right resource that we need to create. As you can see here, the Microsoft Fabric is still in preview. In Azure, if any new product has been released, Microsoft will tag it as preview, which means that Microsoft is doing some ongoing updates or enhancements to the product. So Microsoft recommends not to use Fabric in production at the moment. Okay, so now let's choose this. Here we'll be seeing an option called create. So let's click on it. As you can see here, we are seeing an error message to create Microsoft Fabric. So what's this error message? This Microsoft.Fabric resource is not registered to create it using the subscription. So we can easily fix this issue by registering this resource in the subscription. So for that, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to duplicate this tab, and this time I'll be using Mr. K Talks Tech account to log in, since this account is having the highest level of permission to this subscription. And once it is logged in, I will click on the subscription option and I will click on the Azure subscription one. And inside the subscription, if we scroll down, on the left side, you'll be seeing an option called resource providers. Let's click on this. So we need to register Fabric using this resource provider option. So here in the search box, let's type Fabric. And as you can see here, the Microsoft.Fabric is not registered. To register it, let's click on this and in the top, you'll be seeing a register option and we can click on it to register it. 
So as you can see here, the fabric is now getting registered in the subscription. Cool. Now the fabric has been registered successfully. So what we can do now is, let's go to the other tab and do a full refresh. Nice. As you can see here, now the error message is gone. So we can now be able to create fabric in the subscription. Okay, now let's fill in the required details to create fabric. Firstly, we need to choose the subscription, which has been already done. And next, we need to select the resource group. So I'm going to choose the same RG Mr. K Ashu Tutorials resource group here. After choosing that, we need to give a capacity name, which is the fabric resource name. So let's just give a name called fabric hyphen test. Okay, so here hyphen is not allowed. So let's remove it and just keep as fabric test. So as you can see here now, there is a tick mark here, which means that the given name is a valid one. So after giving the capacity name, now it is asking us to choose the region in which this resource needs to be created. So if you click on this drop down, you can see the different regions supported here. So you can select the location which is closest to your region. I have selected Australia East, which is the closest to my location. Okay, so the next one is the size. This is the most important one. By default, F64 is selected, which means that 64 capacity units. Here we have an option called change size. So if you click on that, you can see the complete list of available SKU with the number of compute units and its pricing. As you can see here, the default F64 SKU cost around $9,817 monthly. You can clearly see that how expensive this tool is. So once you create Fabric, you'll be paying for every second when you use it. But one great feature of Fabric is, you can actually pause the compute when you're not using it, and then you don't have to pay for it. So basically, you need to pay every second only when you are actually using it, and you don't have to pay anything if you're not using it. There is no fixed commitment for using this tool on the basis of cost. I'm going to choose the lowest option available for this demo purpose, since we are not going to perform any kinds of massive big data processing. So I will choose the F21, which contains two capacity units, and it costs around $306 per month. Let's choose this, and after that, click on the select button here. Okay, finally, there is an option called Fabric Capacity Administrator. So by default, the user account who is creating this resource has been selected here. Let's go with the same user for now. Okay, so now we have given all the required details in this tab. Let's click next, which is creating the tags for this resource. It's an optional one, so I'm just going to skip it for now and click on next to review the given details to create this resource. Let's click on the create button now since the validation is successful. As you can see here, the fabric is getting deployed in the resource group. Cool, now we have created fabric successfully. Let's click on this go to resource button to open fabric. As you can see here, now we are inside Fabric. And as discussed before, we have a pause button in the top where you could click on it to pause the compute if you're not using it and thereby you don't have to pay for it. Right now the compute is on, so we have been spending money for every second as we talk. Okay, now we have set up everything required on the show side. Now let's see how we could use this compute in the Power BI workspace. So for that, I'm going to Microsoft Power BI and inside that, let's go to the workspace, which is my workspace. Here, let's click on the three dots and go to the workspace settings. Now in the bottom, we have the fabric capacity licensing, which is still grayed out. So we need to use this option to use the fabric capacity that we have created in Azure. So what we can do now is, let's refresh this page and see if it could reflect the compute here. So the refresh is completed now, Let's go to the same place again and see if the fabric capacity option has been enabled or not. Cool, as you can see here now the fabric capacity is enabled to be used. So what I'm going to do now is, let's choose this fabric capacity license. And now there is an option available to choose the actual fabric capacity that we have created in Azure. So if you click on the drop down here, we can see the fabric test Australia East compute that we have created in Azure. Let's choose this and click on the apply button. Okay, so now we are using the fabric capacity in this Power BI workspace, which means that we have enabled fabric in Power BI. To test this, what we can do is, firstly, let's close this window. Now take a closer look at this UI. Most importantly, have a look at the bottom left corner of this page. 
So if the workspace is enabled with fabric capacity, there will be some changes happening to the UI of this Power BI. To check that, let's refresh this page. Cool, as you can see here, now in the bottom left, you can find a Power BI icon. So if you click on that, you can see the different components of fabric such as data factory, data engineering, data science, data warehouse, and real-time analytics. Also, if you note something in the workspace name, you can see a diamond icon. If you hover over this icon, you can see that it says fabric capacity. In Power BI, this diamond icon represents the workspace with the premium license. So when we use the fabric capacity, this converts the workspace to the premium workspace and hence we'll be able to use the fabric components. Now I'm going to click on this Power BI icon and we'll choose the data factory component. Now using this, we can use the fabrics data factory such as creating pipelines, data flows, etc. For example, let's click on the pipeline option here to create a new pipeline. Let's click on the create button to create a sample pipeline. As you can see here, there is a separate UI to work with data factory pipelines in Fabric. Similar to this, we have separate UIs to work with different components in Fabric, such as data engineering, where we have a separate UI to work with, and also same with the other components like data science, etc. We can explore about all of these in detail in the future videos. So we are now able to use the Fabric components in Power BI since the computer is active in the Azure that we created earlier. Say for example, if we pass the compute, we'll lose all the access to the Fabric components in Power BI. As discussed before, we can also use the Fabric components in other ways, such as purchasing a premium license for the workspace. And also we can use the trial option to use the premium license for 60 days completely free, which is really good. One thing to note here is, one of the main difference between using the fabric capacity and the premium capacity license is, if you are using the fabric capacity, there is no commitment here. Since we have an option to pause the compute, we don't have to pay for it when it is unused. Whereas in the premium capacity, we have a monthly commitment. You can purchase the license only on a monthly basis. So once purchased, even you didn't use the service for the month, you are going to pay for it. That's one of the main difference between them. I think now you have a clear understanding about how to create and enable Microsoft Fabric. In the next videos, we'll explore about each and every components in Microsoft Fabric, such as data engineering, data science, real-time analytics, etc. So that's it for today. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.